A lot of you might be asking, what is an AR9? What is a pistol caliber carbine? Let's break it down really quick. AR9, AR style firearm chambered in nine millimeter. Cool, a pistol caliber carbine, pretty much everything else including an AR9 that utilizes a pistol cartridge and not a traditional pistol, something like this. There you go. Now let's talk about the AR9 versus the PCC and which one I prefer. Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at y'all today from Take Aim Training and Range, and I've got an assortment of beautiful firearms here in front of me. These are all pistols by definition, manufacturer legislation, all right? These are all pistol braces that you see here. These are not stocks, and I think right now is probably a good time to talk about pistol braces because, well, they're under scrutiny yet again, so make sure you're out there doing everything you can to stand and fight for your rights. Follow organizations like the uh, Gun Owners of America and Firearms Policy Coalition because they are fighting for your rights, all right? If you guys don't know SB Tactical and other manufacturers of different types of firearm braces, they're looking to be reclassified as NFA items. So don't let that happen. Go out there, hit up that comment section. With all that being said, today's topic isn't necessarily about the braces. It's actually about AR9s, like this little sexy Engstat that you see right here, versus other PCCs, pistol caliber carbines, all right? like the APC-9, current giveaway, like the CZ Scorpion and the MP5, probably everybody's favorite for a good reason. And we'll talk about all of these here in just a moment. But I do know that a lot of you guys have asked, hey, if I were just to get the new Aero Precision EPC-9, um, do you recommend that? Or should I go for something like the CZ Scorpion? Because everybody talks a little bit about the Scorpion, they're affordable, systems you can customize the crap out of these things as you can tell what i've done with mine i've thrown on all sorts of different braces on here the pdw brace by sb tactical is super cool with the little rails and it collapses this right here is actually the sylvan arms folding adapter for the buffer tube so it'll take your standard m4 tube and allow you to put if you want to sb of this and throw a stock on it you can or you can just use any other type of mil spec brace right pretty cool but anyway a lot, like I said, as you can tell, customization when it comes to the Scorpion. But same can be said to like the MP5, right? There's all sorts of aftermarket stuff available for it. You notice we got the Picatinny rail on this guy here, which is very sweet. I like that a lot. But also too, when it comes to the AR9, there's not actually a whole lot you have to do to these guys. I and mean, we already know just how customizable the AR15 platform uh, is in general. So if you wanted to throw on different rails, different grips, different braces, different optics, different just about anything, you can. But I will say this, I don't think these are as customizable to make your own as other systems out there like the Scorpion. But there are some benefits. For instance, if you're already familiar with an AR-15 but you would like to get a little sub gun, right, something shooting a pistol caliber uh, cartridge through a system that looks and feels like an AR-15. You're already familiar with the controls, right? The safety's already in the same spot. Similar type of trigger, right? Easy enough. It even takes a similar type of charging handle. Some of them actually utilize a standard AR charging handle, which is cool. Bolt release, bolt catch are in the same spot. Magazine release in the same spot. Some have better magazine releases than others. The Angstat does a really good job at being textured here, and it's a very intuitive mag release, which I like a lot. Also too, Aero Precision with their new PCC, their new AR9, uh, have done a great job as well, utilizing again AR15 controls as we all see, and I really like the magazine release on that guy. It sticks out just a bit, very intuitive, like I said, great texture on it, and a very positive feel to it as well. Funny though, because the optic I have on here is like more than the gun. <laughs> Aimpoint T2, ladies and gentlemen, it's a sweet optic. Okay, with all that being said, how about how they shoot? Depending on the system that you're running will definitely determine how it shoots. And of course, what other types of attachments you have on your firearm, uh, different types of muzzle devices, like your standard flash hider that you see on the Angstat and the Arrow, right? No muzzle device whatsoever, like you see on the BNT here. How about a silencer like what we have on the Scorpion, Gemtech 45, 
right? And no muzzle device on the MP5. But the MP5 is special here because all of these utilize the same type of operating system, which is pretty much just a direct blowback, okay? But this guy uses a radio delayed system where it's similar in a sense, but the bolt actually won't cycle until those pressures drop to a safer level. And then you've got these little rollers on the bolt that will disengage and allow the bolt to cycle. It's very cool, very clean running, very smooth running. And out of all of these guns here, definitely the lightest recoiling. Love the MP5 system. It just works well. It's a timeless, it's a timeless firearm. I'm just look at it. This thing is sweet. You know, I mean, it's been around for decades. It's not going anywhere. It's still in service today in uh, different countries, different law enforcement agencies. Yeah, this thing ain't going nowhere. But we'll do a comparison here in just a moment uh, as far as shooting them. Let's go ahead and take the arrow and the Angstat downrange. Let's shoot them a couple of times here, see how they feel. One good thing about most AR9s is the fact that they take Glock mags, right? I know that's everybody's comment, but does it take Glock mags? A lot of the time, yes. Some different systems out there, like the APC-9, you can actually buy a separate lower for it to take Glock mags or even SIG P320 mags, but it does take its standard prepared, pri I can't even say the word right now. It takes its own mag, okay? And that is BNT's mag. It works really well, runs great. It's a reliable system. I like it. So that's kind of the negative against these other, again, I'm gonna put in quotations, PCCs, uh, because they do take their own type of mags, all right? But let's go ahead and run down with the arrow here. Let's go ahead and send some shots with this guy. I've been actually kind of itching to try this one out because it's brand new, right? And here we've got one. And I definitely recommend Aero Precision as a manufacturer anyway. My first uh, AR-10 that I built is a, is a Aero and it runs great. So let's go ahead and give a couple shots with this guy. Feels good. So one thing you will notice though about the AR-9 platform is it does recoil a little bit. It's similar to, I would say about an AR, right? You would think if you're running pistol cartridges through a gun like this and not through an actual pistol that we know in a traditional sense that you wouldn't have as much recoil. Granted, it's not as much recoil as you get like through your regular Glock 19 or anything because you do have more points of contact, of course. You got a little bit heavier system, but it is a little bouncy and that's partly due to the operating system that I mentioned before. A lot of those gases are just shooting straight back and cycling that bolt pretty aggressively. But it does run really well. And of course, with some training and practice like you all should be doing, you'll be able to effectively run yours too. So the Arrow is a great affordable option if that's what you're looking for when it comes to an AR9. Again, awesome, totally recommend, but let's compare that to something a little bit more expensive, but I totally think the quality is worth it as, as, as well as the value. Also taking Glock mags, the Angstat, a little bit shorter boy here. Same brace, the SB Tactical SBA3 brace here. And I do love the fact that they come factory with the uh, B5 systems grip. If you guys have been watching the channel for any length of time, you know how much I love my B5 furniture, okay? Uh, this one right here I do play around with quite a bit. I've got, oh, I've got with my beloved Surefire light here. Let's go ahead and take a couple of shots with this guy. Shorter barrel on it. I think this one's about the uh, five and a half, six inch barrel versus the eight on that guy. So let's just see how it feels with a shorter barrel, right? Again, a little poppy, right? So I'm still getting a little bit of hop to it and everything, a little bit, of, a little bit more felt recoil. But again, it's not bad. If you've shot, if you've shot an AK before and you've shot so effectively, this is going to be like cake. Okay? I would say, like I said before, on par with about a 5.56 gun. But I think partly due to 5.56 guns mostly being a little bit heavier, they actually recoil a little bit less than most AR9s. Personally. They do run really well though, I gotta tell y'all. And they are a lot of fun. What's great about this is let's say, and you gotta think about too, think about like the old Western days, right? You know, you would actually be carrying your revolver and your, your rifle sharing the same cartridge, right? 45 Long Colt, for instance. That's a good thing if your primary takes the same magazines and the same ammunition as your secondary, just in case one of them fails you, you at least can still utilize the same magazine and ammo for the other. So kind of a neat thing to really think about in that situation if that ever uh, 
unfortunately happens to you, okay? Now, we've seen a little bit of a hop on this guy here. Let's see if BNT, who recently won the Army's contract for a new sub gun, let's see how it feels in comparison to the AR-9s. I'm actually kind of curious because this one is significantly more expensive than those two back there for sure. So let's go ahead and take a couple of shots with this guy with the aim point acro here, see how we like it. Definitely a shorter barrel on this guy. We're looking about four and a half inches or so. So I am noticing that it is noticeably louder as well, which is expected with a shorter barrel. So I'm still getting a little bit of a hop. It feels pretty similar to me, but I think mostly because all the weight on this guy is uh, I'm feeling it more here in this area, probably due to where the ammo is. I feel like it's actually controlling some of the muzzle rise. Oh yeah, that definitely feels good though. So, the BNT APC-9, like I said, it's, it's a new gun to the game compared to AR-9s, compared to Scorpions, compared to MP5s, simply because it, well, it was asked for. Like I said, the United States Army was looking for a new submachine gun for their personal, the personal protective detail, and well, BNT, beat out the competition with this guy, the APC-9, okay? Now this one specifically is the APC-9K, shorter model, Pro, which means it has a little bit uh, upgraded controls, doesn't have a reciprocating charging handle, and it also takes standard AR uh, grips. We threw on the SP Tactical side folding brace on this because look at how compact that guy gets. No wonder the United States Army selected it to be there for personal defense, right? Or a protective detail because it's kind of like, to me, reminds me of uh, the famous photograph of uh, Ronald Reagan after that assassination attempt of the Secret Service with the Uzi. This guy's more compact and I would probably say a better, maybe a better system than the Uzi? I don't know. The Uzi's pretty sweet though, so. That's one we could have brought out here and talked about, I guess, but whole different ball game there. <laughs> anyway, now let's have some fun with the Scorpion. The Scorpion and why I decided personally to go with this is its affordability and look, I've met myself before. I know the moment that I get a gun, it's no longer gonna look the same. Every gun I've got does not look like it came from the factory, except for my Finish M39. That still looks like how it did came coming from the factory, which makes sense, right? But literally everything else I own, I've got magazine extensions on my shotguns, I've got different rails, different grips, different furniture, different braces or whatever else on it. And what's cool about this guy is literally anything on it you can switch out. I went for an extended charging handle on it because the one it comes with is annoying. I threw on different safeties because, well, I'll show you why I threw on a different safety, okay? Because it has the Franklin Armory binary trigger in it and uh, it rocks. Let me brighten up my optic there. It just sends it, okay? If you're not familiar with binary triggers, I'll show you how they work really quick. You have two positions, well, three positions. Right now I'm in safe, nothing's gonna happen. Semi, one shot, right? Release, cool. In binary, what's happening is when I pull the trigger, it sends around. When I release the trigger, it sends around. Yes, it's legal. ATF approved, believe it or not, because by definition, a machine gun is one pull of the trigger, multiple rounds sent. Semi-auto, one function of the trigger, one round. And technically, that is a function, and so is that. There you go, all right? Gun laws are stupid. Anyway, so on this guy here, and again, why I went with the Scorpion, it's cost. It's definitely one of the most affordable guns on the table up there, depending on which model you go with. I went originally with the K model, which had the shorter barrel, so that way I can keep it full-time suppressed, as I do. I do have the Hollow Sun HS510C on here, which is a great little optic, love it. You do have the Picatinny rail that runs up top, which isn't unfamiliar whatsoever, except for the MP5. <laughs> I'll make fun of it, but it's still king. I mean, let's be honest. When we shoot that, you guys are like, oh, yes, the MP5, right? But ultimately, even extended magazine release down here just really helps. But I will say this. The one downfall to the CZ Scorpion is I had to do all of this to actually make it comfortable. If I kept it right out of the box how it was, the safety would actually be digging into my finger every time I pulled the trigger. That sucked. The magazine release was kind of difficult to get to and it wasn't that intuitive. The, the charging handle on it, yeah, it was too short and it didn't communicate well with the rail. I just didn't like it. So I, yeah, after I spent, you know, 
$800, $900 for the gun, then I have to go drop another two or 300 just to make it what I want, right? But I'm not complaining because I love shooting this gun. Let's just go ahead and finish it out. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but out of my peripheral, that stream of brass looked beautiful. By the way, the Franklin Army binary trigger works flawlessly in this gun. It just, oh, it's sweet, okay? So yeah, that's kind of why I love it, all right? These things just work so well. They were designed for speed like that. They were designed for full auto capabilities and just to run. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't really cleaned it all. I mean, this thing is filthy, okay? And I'm kind of doing a test, honestly, because I want to keep running it until I start having malfunctions. And this is so I can better inform you guys, right? Because, uh, well, I haven't had any issues with it yet, and that's while shooting suppressed, so that's pretty sweet, right? All right. Last one I want to talk about is the MP5. Now this one, this one specifically, yeah, you can, uh, the MP5 is already not cheap, okay? Right now you can find them for anywhere between $25 to $3,200, right? Depending. Then all of a sudden you add the Knight's Armament Riz Rail to it, an EOTech, the SB Tactical PDW brace. It gets, it gets pricey, boys and girls, but that makes it worth it right there, all right? And that soft recoil for this system really, really makes it worth it. This thing is an absolute beauty. First off, the angled foregrip really complements this rail and just feels awesome. The Knight's Armament rail covers, they're fine. Um, you know, they do add a little bit of bulk to the rail because without it, you can see that it does keep it pretty slim, but I will say that extra bulk here in the rail feels great on this guy. So yeah, the MP5, oh, it is bay. And yeah, we've got a couple binary triggers on the way for this one too, because well, what would a giveaway be without a binary trigger? Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, well, anyway, so, when it comes down to it, ladies and gentlemen, if you want a sub gun of some sort, my best advice to you is to go out there and shoot them. See what you like the best. Having shot all of these and spent quite a bit of time with all of them as well, I can tell you, as I mentioned before, the MP5, softest shooting. Definitely probably the most expensive right next to the BNT, right? But the BNT is utilizing the same operating system as a gun that is a fraction of its cost. Kind of interesting to think about, right? Like. Why is it so expensive? Ambidextrous controls, cool. Is it super compact? Yes. Did it win the military contract? Yeah, maybe that's why. Hmm, I don't know. I'm not showing any hate towards it because I do love shooting this gun and running it. It is a lot of fun. But honestly, between like the arrow and the Angstat, you've got excellent systems here that again, super familiar controls because it's all AR controls. Makes sense. But hey, you guys already know what I went with. The Ugly Duckling. The reason I say that is because right out of the box, it sucks. But after spending another couple hundred bucks, I have really made this thing exactly, exactly what I want for a little compact, full-time suppressed sub gun, right? If only it was actually full auto. The binary trigger's cool and everything, but full auto would be great, if only. Gun laws are dumb. And make sure you are out there fighting for your rights like I mentioned before, okay? Also too, if you're seeing these and you're drooling and you're definitely seeing this one and you're drooling and you're like, man, I really wish I could get that gun, you have the opportunity at no cost to you to get this shipped to your FFL and take it home. All you gotta do is go to classicfirearms.com and sign up for the giveaway. It's easy to do. We've got multiple entry methods. One of the entry methods is by utilizing a code word. And since this is the BNT APC9K Pro, the code word for this one is quite simply, it's three letters. I have faith in y'all. P R Oh, pro. If you don't get that right, maybe the system will be nice to you and let you get those entries. Try APC, maybe that'll work too, I don't know. But anyway, I'll leave it off there. I'll see you guys down in the comments section. And I know a lot of you guys are experts on the internet and professionals and have a lot of advice to give. So go ahead, hit up that comment section and advise all the new shooters out there that are wanting to get into maybe the AR9 platform, maybe just a nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine and uh, let us know what you think. There's one other big dog knot on this table that I think we'll do a comparison of. 
And that's the MPX. If you'd like to see the MPX enter the ring, let me know because sometimes I look at the MPX and I just think I know what love is. If my wife is watching, I, I only feel that way for you and the MPX though, because the MPX is sweet. So let me know down in the comment section. I'll leave it off there, guys. As always, I appreciate you. We appreciate you here at Classic Firearms. All of your business, all of your love and support. Go ahead and give us a like if you haven't done so already. Subscribe if you haven't already. God bless, and we'll see you soon.